And in today's video, we have yet another topic about my new computer that I just recently built. If you haven't seen that, you can check it up at the cards above. But in today's video, I'm going to explain some of the problems I had initially with this build. I'll try to give you the short version of it, and then I will show you what I was able to accomplish with overclocking. <laughs> Okay, first things first, I did run into some issues that were my fault, but I also ran into an issue that was not my fault, and let me explain that a little bit. So when I originally built my computer, I did it on a Sunday, I finished up, and I, I immediately wanted to jump in and edit the video and get everything uploaded to YouTube as fast as possible because I was really excited to get the video uploaded and kind of share what I did. Uh, so long story short on that front, I ran out of time, and to get the computer up and running, I just used the old Windows installation that I had from my X99 build into the new X299 build, and I thought that would hold me over for another week, at least until the next weekend. And yes, I know, installing Windows 10 is a very quick thing. It's very easy to do, but in order for me to install Windows 10 and get everything set up the way that I like it, all of my programs, everything set up exactly how I like everything, it's just, it, it takes a little bit of time. So I put it off, and I was technically able to get Adobe to edit the video and encode it without... Well, I, I did have some problems. Pretty much I used the easy tuning built into the ACS motherboard. I have the Rampage 6 and I overclocked it and then I was like, okay, cool, let's get this video edited. And while I was doing that, I did randomly get hit with, you know, blue screens of death. So that was kind of aggravating. So in order to fix that temporarily, because again, I was trying to wait until the next weekend to, you know, reprogram, I just went in and I disabled all of the overclocking that I did and I edited the video without anything fancy, with no overclocking, no nothing, just to get the video edited, rendered, and uploaded. But man, I was running into all kinds of problems. You know, I was getting blue screens of death. I was having errors and went, I mean, it was just a nightmare. So finally, Tuesday night, I think it was a Tuesday night, I decided whatever, even if I only get this halfway set up, I really need to reprogram. And yes, I know, this is totally my fault. I should have reprogrammed from the beginning. I was switching from X99 to X299, and it was just, it was not a smart move to try to finagle this operating system to work with the new, to the new chipset, and then just hope, you know, to the computer gods that I didn't run into any major issues. But technically, it probably should have worked okay if I didn't have so much stuff set up and configured on my computer, but that doesn't matter. Either way, I reprogrammed on Tuesday. And that actually fixed a lot of my problems, but then I went to edit a wedding video that I was working on, and with my wedding videos, I don't need it all the time, but when I do need it, I definitely need it. I needed to use the effect called Warp Stabilizer. And again, I don't use it a lot, but sometimes I really need just a little bit more stabilization to my shots when I'm editing these wedding videos. And I'll tell you what, it's it, like it would analyze it. And then as soon as I went to stabilize, boom, blue screen of death, just every time it sucked. So I Googled it and I found that there's actually an issue with a lot of different motherboards with the X299 platform where Adobe would call too much voltage uh, from the chip or from the motherboard and it would just cause it to blue screen out. So I don't know if this is a bug with X299, but everyone seems to be pointing at Adobe at this point. So for me to fix it, to stay up and running, to finish my wedding video, the best way I could do it was to disable Turbo Boost. Pretty much what it was doing was that the Turbo Boost, it would, it would kick in more voltage, it would request too much voltage, and then it would just crash out. So you disable Turbo Boost, there's no more of those voltage calls, and then it was not crashing. So it was more or less stable, albeit running slowly. So fast forward to today, a week or two later, and I finally decided to tackle this issue like completely. So in today's video, I want to show you what my system was running like with no turbo boost and no overclocking, then what my system ran like with turbo boost, but still no overclocking. Bear in mind, set up this way, it would not run Adobe. It just, it, it was not stable at all. And then the third one is basically completely overclocking it and fixing the whole Adobe thing that I found kind of sort of by accident, but overclocking it, even though later on I will back it down a little bit. Don't worry, I'll touch on that in a second. So to run through these tests, I actually ran a few different benchmarks. I used Blender, where I rendered the BMW, the Classroom, I also used Firestrike, uh, Time Spy, and Cinebench. Oh, and PC Mark 10. I ran all of these for each phase to see what kind of improvements I got across the board. Yes, Firestrike and Time Spy has a lot of graphics built into it, but I was really curious to see what kind of effect I got on those scores based off the, the processor speed and or turbo boost 
thing. So jumping into those numbers, let's take a look first at Blender. Now, I ran the BMW scenario where you render that out and also ran the classroom scenario. So jumping into those numbers, let's take a look first at Blender. Now, I ran the BMW scenario where you render that out and also ran the classroom scenario. And for the BMW render, it took three minutes and 24 seconds. Again, no turbo, no overclocking, three minutes and 24 seconds. Enabling the turbo boost took me down almost a minute, down to two minutes and 41 seconds. And then after I went through the overclocking, I was able to get that all the way down to two minutes and 17 seconds. And we'll put a little asterisk here though, because pretty much I overclock it to just a little bit over 4.5 gigahertz. And I hit some really, really scary numbers as in temperature numbers, because it spiked up to like 104 degrees Celsius, which to me was kind of the panic button, I <laughs> like freaked out. So to give you a little spoil alert, I actually ended up backing that down to I think 4.15 gigahertz, which keeps me around 95 if I'm like totally maxing it out. But either way, this is something that I need to figure out. And I don't know if I wanna delit it or if I just wanna go full blown water cooling. I feel like I'd probably get more bang for my buck if I deleted it, but I've never actually done that. And honestly, that terrifies me because I don't want to throw away a $1,200 you know, CPU just because I have no idea what I'm doing. So yeah. But anyways, moving on to the classroom render with Blender. <laughs> render with Blender, okay. Stock with no turbo, 10 minutes, 59 seconds. Stock with turbo, eight minutes, 41 seconds. And then turbo with the overclock, seven minutes and 37 seconds. Definitely a huge improvement going all the way to seven minutes and 37 seconds from almost 11 minutes. That's a huge deal. And a lot of that was turbo. I'm telling you, turbo is, I mean, it's definitely needed. Now moving on, let's look at TimeSpy. Now uh, TimeSpy and Firestrike, they both definitely utilize the GPU and test what your computer can do graphic wise in which I have a 1080 Ti. But again, I was definitely curious to see what kind of you know effects overclocking would have on these numbers either way. So with TimeSpy stock, no turbo, we're looking at 4630. You enable the turbo, you get 4702. And when I overclocked it, I got 4734. And Firestrike was actually pretty crazy because it was basically the same thing for every single one. 7,001, 7,000, and then 7,004. Practically the same thing. But I did get a decent bump with PC Mark 10, uh, going from the no turbo with no overclock at 3676, all the way up to 4219 just by enabling turbo, and then overclocking it with turbo, getting 4809. Now the next one was with Cinebench, which was probably me Blech. Now my next test was with Cinebench, and this was probably the more exciting one for me because it just tests raw CPU, and I had numbers from my old X99 system that I could compare it to. And basically with the X99, with the overclocking, the best I was able to get was 1670. And even with gimping my 7940X with no turbo boost and running at stock clock, I was still able to get 2,219. And as soon as I enabled turbo boost, it took me all the way up to 2,671, giving me a solid 1,000 point gain over my X99 system. But that was running at stock, so once I overclocked it, kept the turbo on, I was able to get the score as high as 3,110. Not quite doubling my 5960X, but it was still pretty close. So I know there was a lot of information, but the gist of the story is, is that turbo boost is pretty much magic. And if you can't run it for whatever reason, like in my situation with Adobe, it really sucks. But being capable of enabling turbo and also being able to overclock your computer is a great way to get extra performance. I know it's surprising. Try not to be too surprised, but yeah. But let's talk about that overclocking. Like I said, it got like 4.5 four or five gigahertz. That's what I was able to get my overclocking up to, but I was seeing spikes at 104 Celsius. It was terrifying. So here's what I did. I went into the UEFI and I backed it down. Basically it runs at like 4.15 ish, but my temperatures under full load are only getting about 96 to 97 C. Still pretty hot, but something to keep in mind here is that really, it's not gonna be at full load very often. I mean, take Adobe Premiere for an example. Even when you're rendering, at least for me, I can only get 60 to 70% of my CPU being used at one time. So I'm not really pushing the envelope. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but right now I'm not pushing the envelope. Another thing to keep in mind is too, the new thermal paste I put in there, the Arctic Silver, has been in there for less than 24 hours. So basically my idea here is I'm gonna let that, you know, cure in and, and hopefully, maybe I'll get it, I'll drop a couple degrees once that sets. Uh, I don't know, I might you know, post that on Twitter if it does, but I'm really hoping that that's gonna you know, come in and, and help save my temperatures just a little bit more. It's a far-fetched hope, 
but a hope nonetheless. And three, and for three, I have to say that I am really considering a full-blown water cooling loop in this computer because if I can do that and I can get that extra cooling, then I won't have to delete it possibly, but I don't know. On one end, I just want to get one of those like super cheesy blocks. I think I saw like a few years back where like you set it in there and you like slide it and it deal it. I mean, it still terrifies the crap out of me, but realistically, it's like everywhere you look on the internet, everyone's like, you got to delid this thing. It sucks. Like if you delete it, you're going to drop many, many degrees. So, but if I do the deleting thing, I might as well just do a custom loop. I mean, maybe an all-in-one cooler is just a little bit too much to handle for the 7940X. Maybe. I'm going to run it down in this 4.1 for a while and keep an eye on those temps. If it still makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, I might back it down even more. I'm still getting much better numbers than I had, you know, before today. So I'm definitely not disappointed. And on that topic, how to fix Adobe. I completely forgot about that. So to save time, and it's partly because I'm lazy, I was using the easy tuning option with the ASUS motherboard. Basically, just go in there, you click what you're set up, and it just, it does everything for you automatically. It's amazing. And since I already knew I was kind of running hot, I really didn't have any reason to go in there and try to get every single hurt out of that, you know, overclocking. I was just like, hey, you know what? Click a few buttons and it's done. Hell yeah. But the problem there is that each core's voltage was set to automatic. And that's where I found that Adobe was having an issue. Maybe there's some other stuff too, but what fixed it was going in there and changing each core from automatic to a set maximum voltage of 1.22. And it was in that same screen that I backed down the overclocking as well, but I just limited it a hard limit of 1.22 rather than keeping it as auto. Because in my mind, I was thinking, well, if turbo is automatically giving this thing more voltage and then Adobe was just calling more than it could, that's what was causing the crash. So I did that, I made that hard setting there where it was saying you cannot go over 1.22 and now everything runs fine. I can start up Adobe Premiere finally without it crashing. I even applied a warp stabilizer to a clip. So far, so good, no, no blue screens of deaths. So it looks like just setting that hard limit on the voltage fixed my issue. But hey, time will tell. I did a very simple test, something that was you know repeatedly crashing my system and that did not crash my system. So I'm gonna go in, probably even editing this video, adding you know color grading and, and whatever else I end up putting into the video and maybe it'll crash, maybe it won't. If it does, I'll put it in this video and I'll let you know. So that's where I'm at today. I'm running about 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz. I get pretty high on my temps up in the 97s, a little bit concerned about it. I'm really hoping that the Arctic Silver thermal paste will make that thing go down after that 12 day curing time. I really doubt it will. So during that time, I'm probably just gonna be considering one, how complicated and or how risky and or do I want to void my warranty? Is it to delid the processor? Which I really just don't see me doing. Or two, just you know, going online and, and building a custom loop. I don't wanna do that, but I might have to, maybe. Or I can just bring it down. I mean, can't get greedy with the gigahertz. No, you have to be greedy with the gigahertz. I must have all the hertz. Actually, option number three is I do have some Noctua fans that although are hideous because they're brown, Maybe it could be a fan thing. Hmm. Okay, that will be something to test. Maybe the default Corsair fans just don't push as much. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm going to Google that. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. This is a journey for me. I you know, don't get new computers very often. So, you know, this is all fun and exciting, but also a little frustrating when everything doesn't work out when it, you want it to. So, yeah. But if there's anything in this video that you think you have a resolution for, let me know down below because I'm up for anything right now to get this out of under control. So like and subscribe below and have yourself a good evening or good morning.